Hi, and welcome to the Sports Hall of Fame at the University of Alberta. This is the debut episode of the Green and Gold Show. I'm your host, Daniil Nsalmi. With me today is Dustin Nielsen from TSN 1260 and Voice of the Golden Bears Hockey, as well as Connor Hood, Sports Information Officer for the Golden Bears and Pandas. Today we're talking hockey, so let's get right to it, guys. Golden Bears, back-to-back -back national champs, currently sitting in second place in Canada West. So what's working well for them right now? Oh, uh, well, I think what's working well is the fact that they're able to get as many shots as they want every single game. It's been remarkable now over the last couple of weekends. They haven't turned them into victories, but the bottom line is they're getting a number of opportunities. And if they keep getting those chances, you know, certainly they're going to win the majority of their games down the stretch. But over the last four games, they've had 192 shots, only allowed 92. And anytime you can average 25 more shots than the other team per game, you should win all four of those games, let alone you know only one of the four. Uh, so I'm sure they want to work on that. But what they're working on right now is puck possession, and they're doing a really good job at it. Now, they're the number one offense in Canada West. Six scores in the top 20. Why is it so hard to shut them down? Yeah, well, I think you probably said it with the six scores. I mean, it's tough to contain two lines, let alone a third line. And I think the Bears probably bring that to the table more than any other team. You can say maybe in the country, we don't watch enough of those other teams, but definitely in the conference, this team, now past teams that have won titles have been four lines deep, but this team is really three lines deep, but they're very good three lines. And when those top six guys aren't going, you can have Jamie Crooks and Kieser and Raczynski going and, and, and they'll be able to find the back of the net. And this past weekend, their head coach said they were probably the best line that they had on the Friday night, which ended up being a victory. So just their depth, I think, is what makes a big difference there. And it really sets up well this weekend too, when they're playing Regina. Yeah. Regina has given up 99 goals in 20 games. So it does set up well for the Golden Bears this weekend. Perfect. Now, number one defense at Canada West also with only 47 goals against. Now, is that thanks to the goalie Luke Siemens, the defense, or both, or what is it? Uh, yeah, I think it may even be beyond that, and I think it might be the defensive system of the team. Siemens has looked really good at times this year, but he's also fought the puck quite a bit. Um, his goals against average is by far the best in the conference, and that's a positive, but that's kind of a team stat, the goals against average. And the blue line has some really good pieces, uh, Thomas Cars and you know, Jordan Rowley, Dylan Bredo. I mean, they're, they're all good defensemen, uh, but I think the team defense is what gives you that really low number. And I mean, whenever you see them get in trouble, it's Brett Ferguson, yeah. it's Cruz Reddick, it's those guys who are always in position. Yeah, their forwards can really play a two-way game. And we saw last weekend too with a defenseman that really hasn't stepped up in Dylan Bredo. He was a really tremendous force in both the offensive and defensive zone and that really helps their team defense. Now there's a lot of pressure on this team to complete the three-peat. It hasn't been done since the late 70s, coincidentally, by the Bears. What do you think has to happen from now until March for them to accomplish it? Well, I think there's probably a few things. Uh, I, th I think Siemens is going to have to find his game. Uh, when they went to Nationals the last couple of years, Muka was great. And Siemens, when he got an opportunity there, he was outstanding as well. And then they just have to find the back of the net. Like we said, they're getting ridiculous number of shots, but they're having trouble putting the puck in the back of the net. And you have to think if they keep getting 45 or 50 shots a game, that eventually is going to come. But when the competition gets tougher, you're not going to get 45 or 50 shots a game. So you need to find a way to take advantage. And, and you know what it probably comes down to? Just getting a little greasier. I mean, that's yeah, really Absolutely. all it's going to be. And you have to wonder about this team's motivation as well. Back-to-back -back national champs, like you said, a lot of veterans. What's the drive there for them to win the third straight? A lot of fifth-year guys that they're going to want to leave out on top. Well, yeah, and, and you know what, just to add to that point, that could be why we're seeing a so, I mean, it's still a good season, but a so-so bear season because they likely are going to be in the playoffs yeah. regardless, you know, unless they have a huge collapse. So they're just, I, I think there's going to be another gear that when they get to the playoffs, they say, okay, you know what, we have to win nine games to win a national championship between playoffs and, and the nationals. And I think they'll have that gear there. Perfect. Now let's switch over to Pandas Hockey, who are sitting tied for first place with an 11-7-2 record. Now, Connor, what's going well for them? Similar to the Bears, it's their overall team defense, and it's led from their goaltender. We'll get to that in a bit. But all three defensive lines can really contribute offensively and defensively. They have the number one goals against average in the conference, only 1.4 goals against per game. So to be a good matchup this weekend against Regina, the number one scoring team in the conference, the Cougars are averaging 2.6 goals per game. Should be a good matchup, two away games for the, the Pandas this weekend. Can I just add, 1.4 goals per game is ridiculous. Yeah. Like regardless of the league, that's crazy. Yeah. That's an impressive stat, yeah. No, definitely. Uh, and speaking of that, goaltending has been one of their strengths all year. Uh, Lindsey Post broke the record for Pandas all-time shutouts this season. Sure, he has six this year. 
How great is it for the team having her in between the pipes? It's a really strong second half for her as well. She started the year kind of so-so and the team was one and four, the record. Then she went on a ridiculous run, five shutouts in a six game stretch. She really took control of the team and really led them to those five wins. The offense has been kind of mediocre so far. So it's really based on her performance. Number two in goals against 1.36 and number six in save percentage just over 0.92. She's having a tremendous year, not the same kind of year she was last year, where she had a 940 save percentage and a 1.18 goals against average, which is just phenomenal, and a 20 and six record. She's still putting a, a great showing every night for this Pandas, and she won, she's one of the big reasons that they're winning. Balanced scoring seems to be the theme of this year's team, but a, a rookie is leading the pack right now. Yeah, three of their players have 10 points, and they are led by Alex Poznikov. Rookie, eight goals, leads the conference, 12 points, leads the team and they're gonna have to look for her for the rest of the year she had a really good series against Regina the last time they played three goals and one assist in their weekend series here at Claire Drake so she's gonna really have to step up seven goals in November and only one goal since she's gonna be one of those key players throughout the playoff run that's gonna have to step up and uh, quickly a lot of turnover for the defending Canada West champs seven rookies on the team this season future looks bright for the Pandas yeah absolutely it's considering they're so young and that they're top in the Canada West, it looks really bright, their future, especially if Alex Poznikov can pick it up and they have a lot of youth on the, the back end as well. So you know they're gonna be set for the next three or four years. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Next home game for the Bears is this Friday, the 22nd against Regina at 7 p.m. Dustin will have a call there. For the Pandas, it's the following Saturday on the 30th against the Dinos. For Dustin Nielsen, Connor Hood and myself, this is the Green and Gold Show, and we'll see you next time.